That's right. This was the cornerstone of Liz Truss's bid for Downing Street. She had long advocated for a pro-growth programme. She had talked about it all over the summer during her leadership campaign. She'd installed in 11 Downing Street a chancellor, a friend, who together they worked on this. And within the space of, of just over a month, it's been completely dismantled. It is an extraordinary time in British politics. How much of a humiliation is this for her? And has she been completely, you know, has she had her power base now completely removed? I don't think that we can overstate the humiliation of this. When you essentially make your leadership bid on your economic ability and your economic kind of chops, I suppose, to then actually have that all completely undone, to have to sack the person that you have appointed as chancellor, and then to have a new chancellor, you appoint them, but essentially they tell you what they want you to do, what it's going to take for them to be in the job. The phrase that is doing the rounds is in office but not in power, and I think that that is absolutely true. Liz Truss really has has very little power at the moment. Yeah. Does that mean, though, that her colleagues are going to move on her? Because, you know, the Conservative Party have this very cumbersome process of removing a leader. That's a little bit trickier. There's an awful lot of Conservative MPs who are deeply concerned, not just about the economic situation, but about what that is doing in the opinion polls. And they are looking very carefully and they're trying to figure out whether or not they'd actually keep their own seats if there was a general election, perhaps before Christmas, perhaps just after Christmas. So I think many of them will want to look for a kind of halfway house. They might leave Liz Truss where she is and just let Jeremy Hunt essentially kind of run, run the show from behind the scenes, a bit of a backseat driver. They may want to replace her with a new leader. However, that raises nasty questions about how legitimate would a new leader be when they have not been to the general electorate, they have not even been selected by the entire Conservative Party. There are no nice options in this. The Conservatives are really trying to kind of manage the disaster as best they can. Yeah. So, you know, Jeremy Hunt, of course, had backed her opponent in the leadership challenge. He looked quite prime ministerial tonight. Um, do you think he would want to actually even put himself in that position because it may, you know, ruin his chances given how on the nose the Conservative Party is? I think Jeremy Hunt is a very astute politician and I think he will think that by attempting to fix the problems that there are, that that will help his own standing, that it will help his own bid should he wish to run again. He's run twice already for leader of the Conservative Party and lost both times. So I, I think he, he thinks that he's, he's onto a bit of a winner with this. However, the Conservative Party are also very astute themselves under normal circumstances. I, I think that, that many of them would admit a mistake has been made with Liz Truss. They will be looking for who they think can take them into the next general election in the best possible shape. And some of them may argue that that isn't necessarily Jeremy Hunt. He might be OK for the interim, but they might be looking, for example, at Rishi Sunak, who was the other candidate in the leadership campaign, the former Chancellor. It's very, very difficult at the moment to get a steer on where the Conservative Party want to go in the future. So, Victoria, of course, that's the politics. The economics have been dismal and devastating since the announcement of the mini-budget. Will this tonight be enough to calm things down? That's trickier. I think that it will probably calm things down in the short to medium term. But if you have a leader who essentially has no credibility, who the markets have written off, um, essentially of being someone who simply doesn't have the credibility and the confidence of the markets, they will begin to temper their enthusiasm so, somewhat. So I think it will be a good hold for now. But we'll have to see what Jeremy Hunt says this afternoon in the House of Commons. We'll have to see what happens over the coming days. But I think that Liz Truss is really counting her days in Downing Street. The question is when she leaves, not if she leaves. Yeah, and whether she, she makes the decision to go herself, which might be easier. Uh, many people are saying, though, that no matter who's in charge now, that their standing in the polls is so bad that in, in some ways it might be better to get you know, an election out of the way and, uh, um, and to try and move things forward to calm the country more broadly. I think there are some within the Conservative Party ranks who would make that argument. There would be many outside of the Conservative Party who would make that argument. But I think there's a couple of things to think about. One, that's quite an easy argument to make if it isn't you who's going to lose your seat. There will be Conservative MPs who will not want a general election because they will lose their seat. 
But there's also the situation for the Labour Party. If you go into government at a time when the economic situation is so difficult, there is an argument that actually it's very difficult for you to do any of the things that you want to do. And you can actually end up being tarred by the brush of the activities of the government before. So I think that while the Labour Party will be talking up the, the idea of a general election, in reality, they might want to let the Conservatives stew in this a little bit to give themselves the best possible chance in the general election. Hard to believe things could be <laughs> so bad at the moment, Victoria, but uh, appreciate you making sense of it all for us. Thank you. Oh, my pleasure.